So far, we've considered statistics that are based on the nearest neighbor distance. In this last part of the module on point pattern analysis, we'll look at some other distance-based statistics that now not don't constrain themselves to the nearest neighbor distance, but take all the distances into account. Specifically, we'll be looking at some uh, so-called second, second order statistics, the pair correlation function, the K and the L function, and then those are all based on cumulative distributions, whereas the KD function is based on an actual density. And before we go into the specific statistics, um, I'll discuss some general principles behind this approach. So basically what we're doing here is we're moving beyond just the nearest neighbor statistic. And the uh, rationale for that is that nearest neighbor distances, because they're just one out of all the possible pairs of distances for each given event, they do not fully capture the complexity of the point processes. So um, the other approach is not to limit ourselves to the nearest neighbor distance, but to look at the distribution of all the distances and somehow, again, same rationale, relate that distribution to what it would be under complete spatial randomness. And we have two ways of approaching this. One is similar to what we saw for the G, the F, and the J function, namely that we construct a cumulative uh, density function. Another one is that we construct a density function, so not cumulative. The important concepts in this respect are, again, the concepts of intensity. And we've already uh, covered the average intensity as a mean-like moment of a point process. It's a first-order moment. And we, can, we know that we can um, express that as a function of location in a, in a stationary homogeneous process, as, which is what we've been considering so far mostly, the intensity should be constant. So the lambda as a function of location x is a constant lambda. And the, the, this is a mathematical way for us to deal conceptually with um, the number of points over a given area as the area becomes infinitely small. So that is a limit. And the uh, as before, the number of points that we can expect in a given area is the intensity times the size of the area. And so formally, we make the size of the area dx um, is a very small area. So conceptually, the number of points in a very small area is lambda times dx. And this brings us to the notion of a second-order uh, intensity function, which is, uh, in, a, in a loose sense, uh, the counterpart of a notion of covariance. And, and basically, it's the cross-product of these um, the number of points in a small area, in two different small areas. So if we have two small areas, we call one dx, the other one dy, um, how many points are in this, and what is the, like a covariance, the expected cross product of the number of points in each of these small areas, dx and dy, over uh, their sep the product of the areas. So the expected number over the uh, area. So just like the first order intensity function is the ratio of the number of points over area, here, the second order intensity function is a ratio of the expected value on the average, in other words, of the product of the number of points in two areas divided over the product of those areas. And again, conceptually, this is uh, mathematically manipulated as these areas go to the limit to be very small. Now, the interesting part, this is a little um, heavy concept, maybe different to uh, conceptualize, but it, it's easy if you think of a concept of a covariance. Now, because it is in space, the covariance depends on the location and um, maybe also the direction and the distance between the two 
small areas that we're considering. Now, the interesting um, aspect of this is that for a stationary process and an isotropic process, so our pancake model, this uh, second order intensity function, lambda 2 of x and y, only depends on the distance between x and y. So we have generalized the concept of intensity from first order intensity to second order intensity. And then we're going to construct or um, explain the construction of a number of new statistics that exploit this um, notion of second order uh, intensity or the notion of covariance, if you wish. And these are re generally referred to as second order statistics. And so rather than computing the nearest neighbor distance, as we've done previously, these second order this, uh, statistics um, look at the number of other points within a given rag radius of a point. So we, we're counting points within a radius rather than looking at distances between the points as such. And this can be related uh, formally to this notion of covariance or this notion of the second order intensity. And there are um, basically two approaches to deal with this. One estimates this second order intensity function directly. That's called the paracorrelation function or small g function as opposed to the capital G function, or sometimes also referred to as g hat because it's estimated. And um, the other are the Ripley's k, which is arguably the most used statistic in the point pattern context, and then it's um, standardization in the form of BSAC's L function. So before we get into the, these uh, K and L functions, we'll um, consider the pair correlation function uh, briefly. So as I mentioned, uh, this pair correlation function is really um, like a covariance or like a correlation um, uh, because it is the ratio of the covariance, which is the concept we just saw, the second order intensity function, over the product of the first order intensity functions. So um, the um, interesting aspect of this is that when certain types of processes, when a process is independent, and this is you know loosely in analogy to what holds for a correlation, when a process is independent, then its second order intensity function is simply the product of the two first order intensity functions. So this G function or pairwise correlation function is a measure of deviation from independence. And of course, in our point pattern context, independence always means homogeneous Poisson process where uh, we've seen earlier that the the location of an event at one particular point does not affect the location of the event of an event at another point so that's the notion of independence this function is actually quite difficult to estimate because it is based on concepts in the limit as if as you remember uh, these dx and dy areas go to zero. In practice, we've, of course, we can't do that. We have to approximate it by discrete, um, uh, carry out a discrete approximation, and, and we won't get into all the detail. Just keep in mind, it is quite complex. And so when we estimate this function, now the reason why this is yet another function is that, again, just like the j function, one in our discussion of nearest neighbor statistics, this pairwise correlation function it really has a tight connection to some of the characteristics of um, theoretical spatial process models. And some authors really uh, prefer it as the, the, the best way to characterize a process. Um, Interpretation and inference is very similar to what we've seen before. It's always the same thing. This is way too complicated to carry out analytically, but we can figure out what this um, 
pairwise correlation function would be for complete spatial randomness and, and as I already alluded to when the process is independent which is what a complete spatial random process is then the covariance or the second order intensity is simply the product of the two first order intensities so the numerator in the correlation function equals the denominator so the result is one so for complete spatial randomness the g or the g hat function is a constant at one a horizontal line when we are above the line the implication is a cluster process um, you know, correlated more correlated than um, spatial randomness and when we're below the line we're less correlated than spatial randomness and that implies a regular process or inhibition and uh, GR function is actually quite complicated and can change at different distance ranges this is related to the particular processes we try to identify and for small distances in particular when there is a cluster process this a GR can take on very high values and as the distances increase um, it, it goes down um, remember that uh, an assumption that we made is that if we have a stationary process these covariances only depend on the distance so that's a rationale for plotting it against the distance uh, if they depended on other things as well direction for example then we couldn't do this so less than one implies a regular process um, there is a very interesting connotation that when the g function equals zero for distance values be, be below a critical distance they imply a particular type of inhibition process a particular mathematical process that has a hard core and the concept of a hard core we haven't really talked about but that's a characteristic of some of the theoretical point mathematical point processes that are out there namely that there is so much inhibition that it is impossible to find a neighbor within that distance so this uh, pairwise correlation function can be used in the identification of some uh, spatial processes that might model the pattern that we observe um, the interpretation of significance is the same as before this is way too complicated analytically so therefore we resort to randomization and the randomization envelope um, following the same principles as before we create many random patterns we compute the function for each of these patterns and then for each distance take the smallest and the largest which then constitute constitute the uh, envelope um, for our uh, Chicago supermarket example you see uh, as I uh, suggested before very high values for very low uh, distances and then it drops off and and decreases and it's pretty much above the line at one which is the red dashed line except for very large distances so this is a typical pattern for a clustered a typical feature for a clustered pattern and then when we add the uh, randomization envelope to it, it it just confirms what we already had the gray band around the red theoretical value which is now no longer a constant but is the average of the values generated in the envelope so it's it's almost constant but not quite especially not for very small distances um, we see that the curve is above the envelope for most of the interesting distance range which confirms the suggestion of uh, clustering so what we've uh, covered in this first uh, section is basically the idea of advanced distance statistics that go beyond the nearest neighbor distance and take the characteristics of all the distances into account and in particular uh, we extend the notion of intensity to second order intensity which is uh, similar to the notion of covariance and then uh, turn that into a correlation measure a pairwise correlation measure that we can interpret as a characteristic of the point pattern distribution
And next we'll turn to the k and the l function.